Hello and welcome to this Come to Jesus Daily devotional. I trust you are well and this week we pick up again our Luke series after our recent break over the summer and during our God's Vision for the Church series. So I hope you can enjoy this, getting back into Luke. And today we reflect on how Jesus wants to work through us to bring many to freedom in him. So let's read from Luke 13, 10 to 17. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrite. Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your donkey or ox from the stool and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Sophie Scholl, a member of what was known as the German resistance group, which was known as White Rose, defied Nazi rule during World War II. Alongside her brother Hans and other students, she secretly distributed leaflets calling for the end of Hitler's regime and an end to the war. Despite Nazi laws that made resistance punishable by death, Sophie believed in justice and human rights. In 1943, she was caught distributing leaflets at the University of Munich. After a brief trial, Sophie, Hans and and another member were executed. Her bravery in standing against oppression has made her a great symbol of resistance to injustice. Before her execution, she said this, How can we expect righteousness to prevail when there is hardly anyone willing to give himself up individually to a righteous cause? Now, this illustration of breaking an ungodly rule may seem very strong and over the top, but I want us to be to understand that breaking the Sabbath rules, breaking the Sabbath laws, were punishable by death. And Jesus, the, the hatred for Jesus, the growing hatred for Jesus that will take him to the cross was greatly, this, this hatred was, was fanned up, fanned into flame, partly because of the way he treated the Sabbath and that the way that the religious leaders thought that, from the, in their opinion, that he was misusing and disrespecting the Sabbath. Now, of course, he wasn't, but from their view, he was. And um, Grant Osborne writes this, the, uh, the Old Testament only stipulated that the Sabbath was to be holy and a day of rest from work. That's from Exodus 28 to 11 and Deuteronomy 5, 12 to 15. But the Jewish people needed directions on what constituted work on the Sabbath. So the Mishnah developed 39 rules on what could or could not be done then. So you see they're in their desire to honour God's Sabbath. In their zeal for God, they made up more and more commands for people to keep so that they wouldn't break the Sabbath. They made these additional rules rules, and their misapplied zeal for God meant that they were failing to love people. This led to them failing to love people and were even harming people as we see 
in our passage today. On another occasion, when these religious people challenged Jesus for picking corn in order to feed his hungry disciples, they challenged him on this. He says this to them, if you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. You see, what they were doing was they were so devoted to sacrifice, so devoted to worship, so devoted to keeping their laws that they were not being merciful. They were forgetting to love people. They, they had misapplied zeal for God. Now God no, no obedience to God, no obedience to his laws ever makes us unmerciful and unkind to people like the woman in here. Go As the, the, the synagogue ruler says, go away, come back on six, other, there's six days where you can be healed. What a ridiculous thing to say. What religious mania is that when you start saying things like that? And we can all do that. We can all be so devoted to our sacrifice, to our devotion to prayer, good things, right? Devotion to prayer, devotion to tithing and giving money to the church, right? Good things. Devoted to Bible reading, devoted to going to church, devoted to being involved in the things of God. So devoted that we can forget mercy. We can forget our neighbours. We can forget to share our faith with our community. We can forget to be involved in other people's lives who are outside of the church. And I, know, I mean, I've heard of great religious leaders, great Christians whose family life was a mess because they were so devoted to sacrifice that they forgot mercy. And this can happen to us, can't it, as we can see in this passage today. And the reality is this is what Jesus says here. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And what we're in our lives, our obedience to Christ is meant to lead us to serving him in such a way that we're bringing freedom to people in Christ. So in response, what does this passage te teach us today? Firstly, it teaches us to beware of making up rules that we presume to be God's will and rules that lead to us being unkind and unmerciful and judgmental. Secondly, it teaches us that we, are, we live in a fallen world where there is suffering and sickness, and we're to be led by Christ to doing all that we can do to help. We can't do everything, but Christ wants to lead us to do some things to serve people who are suffering. Thirdly, it teaches us about the power of prayer over the power of the kingdom of darkness. We are to pray for people, pray for people who are being assaulted with temptation, depression and sickness. Let's, let's believe in the power of prayer to break through and to crush Satan under our feet, as, it's, as, it, as the scriptures say. Fourthly, we see that in order to be fully devoted to God and his will, we must be prepared to break ungodly rules at the risk of being hated or even, as our uh, anecdote shows uh, earlier about Sophie Scholl, even be prepared to die in the cause of serving Christ and righteousness. We must be prepared to break ungodly rules. Rules that harm people, rules that are restraining us from sharing the gospel, rules that are harming society. We must be wise and prayerful, but we must be prepared to break ungodly rules if we're going to be fully devoted to serving and following Jesus Christ. So let's pray as we come to an end today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your beautiful example of true obedience that led to bringing freedom to people. Help me to be fully and correctly obedient to your word in service to others. May many see you in me and come to worship you as a result. Amen. God bless you.